church, welcome to this um, Sunday service. Can we just uh, bow our heads as we um, commit the service unto the Lord? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this brand new day. We thank you, Lord God, for the beginning of this brand new week. As we go into a time of praise and worship your word, we ask that you take complete control. We thank you for keeping us even up until this time, for your continued protection, Father God, for keeping us safe under the shadow of the Almighty through all these past weeks, Father God, we say thank you. And even today, we thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. We ask that your name and your name alone will be glorified, and even as um, those online are tuning in, that, Father God, that their lives will never be the same again. We give you all the praise, O God. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we have prayed. Amen.
school for the prayer time and uh, for the wonderful tradition by the choir. We thank God. Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for the wonderful gift of life. Father, even as we go into the world this morning, O oh Lord, speak through me. Let your power be manifest in your word. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify your name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Any part around the world, it might be afternoon, it might be evening. Good day. This is a wonderful time in your presence. My word to you today is very short and simple, as directed by the Holy Spirit. Today's uh, topic is the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We all know what the world is going through right now without repeating myself. We are all put in a, a, a confused state. We all know what is happening. When you put on your news, anything that there are frightening things happening there, the essence is that. Uh, our joy has been eroded. Our happiness has been eroded. That is why I think the word, this word is due in season. It is just to encourage you through the word of God. Just to encourage you that all is not over. For you not to lose your joy. For the enemy not to steal our joy in the name of Jesus. This morning I will... Um, Going to the Bible, two passages first. Two passages. I want you to open with me Nehemiah 8, 10 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 10 and 12. Then, secondly, you go to John 15, 5 to 11. John 15, 5 to 11. I read Nehemiah. Of course, you know Nehemiah is in the historical books and is in the Old Testament. Nehemiah 8, 10 to 12, I read. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day, this day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Remember, the topic this morning is the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's my strength. Yeah, Nehemiah is saying this, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Verse 11 said, and the Levites too quieted the people telling them, whoosh, don't weep for this is a sacred day, amen? So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great joy because they had heard God's word and understood them. I just do a brief synopsis of this. What is happening here is that Nehemiah, uh, this is a position of a place where Ezra, after the train of Israel, left, came back from exile. There was confusion in the land because their temple has been desecrated. There's nothing, they lost everything after the years in captivity. So Ezra had to take them to the book of to the book of the law, to take them to the word of God, to encourage them that all is not lost. And here we see Nehemiah adding to what Ezra said. If you read chapter 8, we have to remember Ezra is a contemporary of uh, Nehemiah. So all is not lost. That's why I said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Go and enjoy choice food. All is not lost. Yes, you can, we can relate with this situation now. Most of us have been on lockdown, thinking all is lost. Resources, businesses, we are in a period of uncertainty. Yeah, God is talk, talking to us through Nehemiah that, look, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Then John 15, 5 to 11 John 15, 5 to 11. Some may ask, yes, how do I get this joy? John 15, 5 to 11 says, this is Jesus Christ saying, talking in his, in his person. It's Christ is saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father is glorified, amen? That you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Hallelujah. As the Father loved me, I'm in verse 9, as the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. Listen to verse 11. It says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Amen. This is point clear. The joy I'm talking about is the joy of Christ. It's only the joy that joy Christ can bring. Verse 11 said, These things I have spoken to you, I'm speaking to you, that my joy may remain in you, and your joy may be full. Amen. Somebody's joy will be full this point in the name of Jesus. Let us see a few definitions here. The joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength, says Nehemiah. What is strength? What does the word strength mean? My Webster Dictionary defines strength as the quality of state of being strong, capacity for exertion or endurance, power to resist force, solidity, toughness, 
power of resisting attack, impregnable, Webster Dictionary. However, after looking at that, I'm not pleased with that definition. Because I'm talking about the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy derived, the strength derived by, from God. This is my definition of strength. The strength, according to my study, says, is the quality of state. The quote is the quality or state of being spiritually and physically strong with the ability to withstand great force or pressures in life. I repeat, is the quality or state of being spiritually and physically strong with the ability to withstand great force or pressure of life. Two important words there, spiritual and physical. There's no point you physically strong and spiritually weak. There's no strength there. This is no strength you get by going to the gym, eating good food, or pumping up drugs. Is the strength built on your faith in God? Praise the Lord. Is the strength built on your faith in God? God is a rock. It is a strength determined by your relationship with Jesus. Amen? Proverbs 24.10 makes me understand that. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. When adversity comes, and we become weary and faint, that means our strength is small. The next definition I'll go to is, what is joy of the Lord? What is joy in Webster Dictionary defines joy as the emotion evoked by well-being, success or good fortune, or by the prospect of processing what you desire. That is delight. It is the expression or exhibition of such emotions. A state of, a state of happiness or felicity a source or cause of delight. That is the Webster, Webster Dictionary. Well, the Greek word for joy is, the word joy in Greek Old New Testament is the word chara, and the Hebrew version is smika, pronounced simka. You will know the New Testament in Greek and the Old Testament in Hebrew. This is my definition of joy. Apart from what the Webster, because Webster Dictionary based it on emotion of being so good fortune. But this is my definition. Joy is the inner gift of the spirit in subtle assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life is the inner gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? In settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that everything all right now is ultimately, every, everything is all right now. And ultimately, everything is going to be all right in future. And the determined choice to praise God in every situation. That is my definition. I've given you the Webster definition, but I've given you the spiritual definition from my studies of the Bible. It is the inner gift of the Spirit, praise the Lord, in settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that everything is all right now, and ultimately everything is going to be all right in the future and determined choice to praise God. So anything you are going through now, have joy in it. It's the inner building. is the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? A brief study of my Bible shows few, well, there are some categories of joy. You have the ordinary joy, one. Two, you have great joy. According to Nehemiah 8.12, that we read, we read, 
previously. Then you have kingdom joy. I'm talking about the categories of you have kingdom joy. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Then number four, fourth category of joy is joy overflow, full joy. John 15 that I read earlier on, the new NLT version said, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. That is overflowing joy. You are so full of joy that it pours out. It is evident in people. You are so full in the internet that you, are, you start overflowing and blessing others. Amen? There's a difference between joy and happiness. Joy is not the absence of pain. Remember, it's not the, we are not denying pain. It's not the absence of pain. It's a fruit of the Spirit you exhibit in spite of your pain. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit in you. Yes, we are going through some difficult questions have been asked all over the world. No answer. We are not denying the facts. But because there is a fruit of the Spirit, we exhibit it. In spite of that, we have joy. Amen? Joy and happiness are not the same thing. Sometimes we feel pleasure because of the good things that happen to us. Happiness is a function of what is happening in your life. Certain people get drunk just to have temporary pleasure. Something happened. Happiness is based on what has happened in your life. Maybe you bought a new car. Maybe you got a promotion. Yeah, those things are nice things, but they are not joy. They can be because they are temporal. Joy is an extreme form of happiness which comes from peace of mind and not from the pleasures material things can offer. Happiness may not last so long, but don't say that of joy. Briefly, I'll give you an example, because what I'm preaching right now, I'm preaching out of my experience. Many, many years ago, just a small story, I was well, I had a job in the city of London. I won't mention the bank's name. I was recruited from Paris, and nice job. That after some years, I was given a sack notice. I didn't do anything, nothing wrong. But the wonderful thing is that the day I was handed over the notice, I remember it was a Friday, I was given that notice where my employment was terminated. I went out just beside the office in the city. There was this Tesco show. Um, yes, it was a Max and Spencer show. I went into that store, bought chocolate, and came back to the office and distributed chocolate to my members of my department. Everybody in the office was shocked. They were shocked that how can a man that just got a sack notice come and give us present? They were surprised. Why? Because my happiness is not based on that job. The job can go. So I didn't allow anything affect my relationship with God. I was able to express to the enemy that, yes, I might be down, but I'm not out. Amen? How to get joy and maintain it? Praise the Lord. Oh, you might be asking, how do I get this joy in all what you've said? I'll be very direct this morning to us. One, number one, Jesus is the only source to get joy. The world will give you happiness, but joy comes from only one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. 
John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. This is point blank. This is absolute clear. Christ is saying, without me, what we are talking is you can't get it. You can't do nothing. Number two, abide in me. That means how to get that joy and maintain. Abide in me. Abide in God. John 15, 7. To abide in God is not only coming to church on Sundays. As we can see, the dynamics have already changed. How do you abide in God when that Sunday service is not there? It means sanitizing your environment with his presence always. Praise the Lord. This means continuous relationship with the Holy Spirit. You abide in God always. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and be sad. Even when things are turning around, put on some worship songs. Even in your car. Fill your car with the, with the presence of God. He said, abide in me through prayers, through worship, through meditation. Psalm 1611 says, Psalm 1611 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Praise the Lord. This joy I'm talking about can only be obtained in the presence of God. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. Number three, let the word abide in you. As we see, Ezra read the word of God to the children of Israel. As we are reading this morning, let the word of God abide in you. John 15, 7. There are over 150 Bible passages with the word joy. So I can say for every day, pick a word. Read them, study them, memorize them, and walk in it. Praise the Lord. Number four. Abide in the love of God. No, remember this. No matter where and what you are, God loves you. Never you forget. I'm looking straight into the camera right now. Look, God loves you. No matter how you feel, God loves you. No matter what you do, God has loved you with an everlasting love. The love of God is frequently mentioned in the Bible through stories and proverbs as divine, through and everlasting. In fact, the Bible says that God is love. Praise the Lord. What else? God is love. God is not a ruling di dictator looking to punish you or us when we do wrong. No. Our Father is a loving Father. His love is characterized by His grace, forgiveness, and His eternal. On condition. I'm talking about the agape love. Few Bible passages say John 3 16, because of time. John 3 16, 4 John 4 7 to 8, 4 John 4 1, 1 John 4 7 to 8, 1 John 4 9 to 11, Romans 8 37 to 39. Isaiah 54, 10. Isaiah 54, 10. I'll just read three of these. Repeat again. John 3, 16. 1 John 4, 7 to 8. 1 John 4, 9 to 11. Romans 8, 37, 39. Google it. A lot of passages on the assurance of the love of God. Romans 8, 37 to 39 say, No. In all this, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, or nor heavenly ruler, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in our grave will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You take this word, let this word become 
a rhema word that God loves you is an assurance. At least your life is provided for you. That's love is not. Then think about your blessings. John 3.16 says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Praise the Lord. I'll move on. It is the fruit of the Spirit, number five. The last one was the love of God. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and, there are, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Joy is mentioned in the fruit of the Spirit. We shall remember, it is a command. Praise the Lord. We are commanded to rejoice. And because it's a command, living a life of bitterness, in the Bible, joy is a command. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, Always be, be full of joy, always. Luke 6.23 says, Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It's a command that must be obeyed. Number seven, see God in all you do and thank him. Praise the Lord. See God in all you do and thank him. When you thank, when you have a life of thanksgiving, your thank will always be full, never run empty. Number eight, let go and let God be. Praise the Lord. Let go and let God be. Let go of those in the past. Philippians 3.13 says, Brother, I do not consider that I have made it known, but one thing, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead. Isaiah 43.18-19 is another part of that scripture. Praise the Lord. Joy in service. Number nine, joy in service. You give joy in your service to God and man. Philippians 2.11 Then Colossians 3.23-24 Then finally, 10. Number 10. God rejoices in soul winning, praise the Lord. When one sinner repents, there is joy in heaven. So when joy is, God is happy with you, of course he'll extend that joy. Evangelism. This is not the period to keep quiet. He said, I, Jesus said, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15, 10. Praise the Lord. So I've given you, this is not a conclusive list, but because of time, this briefly, I go through, you go through it. I hope you are blessed this morning. We pray that uh, this, we soon see each other and all this is a challenging time really. Everything will be over in the name of Jesus. Be it with the peace of the Lord. Let us pray this moment as I bring this time into conclusion. Repeat after me, my father, you created me out of joy. When you made me, you said I am perfect. You made me to live a prosperous life, full of happiness and peace. Heavenly Father, you are my strength and my redeemer. You are my healer and my provider. Lord, I give all my prayers to you. I lay it all at your feet. Fill me with your joy and take away any sadness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Remain blessed in the Lord and see you soon. Thank you very much. Good day, church. Trust we've all been blessed by the message today. Now it's time for us to give our tithe and offering, and all the details will be on the screen shortly. You can also find these details on our website at 
rccgnla.org.uk. May the Lord continue to bless and replenish you as you continue to give during this difficult period. God, everlasting King of glory, Elohim our God. We want to give you thanks, Father, Lord of God, for 
uh, the privilege that you've given to us to be able to give a token out of the much that you've blessed us with, even in our offering this day. We call unto you, Lord of God, to accept this offering out of your mercy, that is that by your grace, Lord, that you bless it. And Father, in blessing it, Lord of God, you will bless us in the same manner. Uh, Father, we are grateful for this privilege. I commit the offering unto you this day. And we call unto you, Lord of God, to help uh, the custodians of this uh, offering to use it judiciously. Uh, Father, to use it towards the furtherance of the work of thy kingdom here on earth in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord, in the same manner, we want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to give in tithing. Thank you because by your grace, the tithe is to also help the work in the house, in the ministry. Father, we continue to trust in you, Lord of God, that every single one that has committed in their offering and their tithing will continue to experience by your grace open heavens in Jesus' name. And Father, the devourer will never have any place in each and every one of our lives, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord of God, by your grace, Heavenly Father, that there would always be multiplication uh, in terms of your blessings in the name of Jesus. Thank you once again for this opportunity. We give you all the praise. And for those, O oh Lord of oh God, who desire to give, but for one reason or the other have not been able to, we trust and believe in, O oh God, that when we once again gather, Father, Lord, by your grace, they would have much to also give. So we bless you once again. We give you thanks for this. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Good day, church. Trust we've all been keeping well and safe. Now it's time for us to hear from some of our NLA family on how they've been coping during this lockdown period. God bless you as you watch this. Good day, church. Hope everyone is keeping well and safe. I think like everyone has realized, life in lockdown has reinforced the notion that only the basic things in life really matter, such as food, family, shelter, and friends. Life in lockdown has reminded me never to take simple things for granted, such as traveling to work, buying groceries, or going to church. Obviously, traveling to work has not been an option for about six weeks and even now, it's still not an option for me, even though the government has stepped down the lockdown rules. I've had to adjust mentally to my new office. Thankfully, I have three colleagues to share my office with. This is my hobby and my children. We respect each other's space and, you know, we kind of know when we're in meetings and, you know, try to respect each other as well. Um, we also go on lunch break together as much as we can. On the home front, it's been challenging trying to come up with creative ideas for meal times. But we take each day as it comes with a bit of planning ahead and then make it up as we go along. The kids also chip in from time to time. For example, Tommy Sim made McDonald's and McMuffin brunch on Easter Sunday, and Dami has treated us to steak and mash, and more recently, he treated us to um, chicken in special fried rice with chicken in black bean sauce. So, family time has been good and extended, and we don't feel rushed to do things. We've also incorporated an open, informal family Bible reading time, uh, which is a time to dig deep into the Word of God and discuss important godly principles with the children. The children are growing so fast, and every opportunity to share the Word of God with them should be embraced. Personally, I found that I've been more reflective during this time. I try to listen to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit, as I go through the day. I'm reminded of the parable of the 10 virgins, where five had enough oil in their lamp and the other, had, or the other five had little. Above all, I've tried to pray more and spend more time in his presence. I've done a lot of calling and texting loved ones, so no one feels alone in this pandemic. I go on walks when I can, bush trails, and I try to cycle as well, just to keep fit. My prayer is that the Almighty God, the Ancient of Days, and the Great Deliverer will keep us all from harm during this time and beyond. See you on the other side by His grace. Amen. Good day, Church, and thank you for joining our online service. We believe you were blessed by the sermon you have heard today. It is our prayer 
that the word that has come forth will bear much fruit in each of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Please listen to the following announcements. Our weekly services are as follows. Sunday morning prayer meeting via conference call, 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Sunday school, 9.45 a.m. to 10.55 a.m. via conference call. Our Sunday service starts at 11 a.m. via our online YouTube channel at RCCG. NLA. We meet on Monday morning to pray from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. via conference call. Tuesday half hour with Pastor Tokwe from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. via conference call. Wednesday midweek service prayer via conference call from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Friday prayer meeting via conference call from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday prayer meeting via conference call from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Conference call joining in details can be found on the church WhatsApp group. As we continue to fellowship via our various virtual platforms, we are encouraged to give our tithes offerings and seeds of faith towards the church rent and building fund. Let us remember that our giving is a sign of worship to God. Church online giving details are as follow. For tithes and offerings, account name RCCG New Life Assembly, sort code 40 2016 account number 31880578 for the church rent and building fund account name RCCG New Life Assembly sort code 402016 account number 71 Double eight eight two two six. The Lord bless you as you give cheerfully. These are the announcements. Thank you and have a blessed week. Amen. We will just share a quick word of prayer for those who have had reason to celebrate. Uh, achieving another milestone in their lives with their birthdays this last week. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's all bow down our heads to pray. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord, for all your children who have celebrated this last year. Thank you, Lord, because we know that it shall be well with them. In spite of the lockdown, Lord, at this period of separation, they will draw ever closer to you heavenly father and as the season passes lord there will be a lifting up because this year ahead will be their time to arise and shine for the light has come the light of god and the glory of the lord is lifted around each and every one of them we thank you lord because we're asking that by your grace that the lord will bless them and keep them that lord you'll make your face to shine upon your children father that you'll be gracious to them in the year ahead and Lord, you will lift up your countenance upon them and grant them peace in all their endeavours. We trust and believe, Lord, that by your grace, the lines have fallen for each and every one of them in pleasant places. And they have a good inheritance in you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, because you're the one who has thoughts of good and not of evil to give them a future and a hope. And therefore, Lord, we rejoice with them. Lord, we say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, because they will grow ever closer to you. And Heavenly Father, they will even decrease so that you might increase. Thank you, Lord, because these ones shall be vessels unto honour in the kingdom of the Most High God. It is well with each and every one of the celebrants, Heavenly Father. Grant them a gift that only you can, in line with your will and purpose for their lives. We just thank you, Most High 
Heavenly Father, because we believe that with long life you will satisfy them, Lord, and you'll show them the joy of your salvation. We give you glory, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Hello again. Uh, we lift up those who uh, have also had reason to celebrate uh, wedding anniversaries this last week. Uh, let's bow down our heads to pray as we speak a blessing into their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we just thank you for those uh, who have had reason to uh, celebrate a wedding anniversary this last week. Father, it is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our sight. We rejoice, I exceedingly glad, Heavenly Father, because indeed uh, it is your grace that has been sufficient for them through the years together. But we also rejoice, Lord, because we know that the best is yet to come. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we uh, ask today that by your grace you will continue to bind these these unions in your sight with a three-way cord that can never be broken, that the only third party in these marriages will be the Holy Spirit himself, who will be their guide, their counsellor, their helper, Heavenly Father. You will speak wisdom uh, into both the head of the home, who is the Father, and you will give uh, guidance and love uh, to cause to overflow in the lives of the mother also. But the children in this union will continue to rise up and call their mother blessed, and our Lord and our God, they will also flourish like a palm tree by the rivers of living water. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because the gates of hell shall not prevail against these marriages, uh, but by your grace, Heavenly Father, they shall be for signs and wonders in Israel, that their lives will be a testimony, not to just those who are married, but those who are yet to uh, join the union, that, Lord, their home will always reflect the will of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it shall be well with them in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will cause their home to be filled with joy and laughter, and you will pour your new wine in the form of the Holy Spirit into that union, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the years thus far, but Lord, we trust and believe that the best is yet to come. And so thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you are doing in the marriages in New Life Assembly. We give you all the glory, all the honour, and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Happy Sunday. I trust you and your loved one are doing very well. And I also believe that you were blessed by the message uh, today. Uh, now it's time for us to commit this week into God's hand. That as we go into the week, let's thank God for the past week let's thank him for his faithfulness his loving kindness let's thank him for his provision let's thank him for his protection let's thank him for all that he has done for us even during, during this period of lockdown let's thank him for peace and joy in our home uh, let's thank him for good news concerning our loved ones both near and far Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Uh, we cannot begin to recount, you know, your blessing, your goodness towards us. But Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, for the week ahead of us. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have gone ahead of us. We know you have made the crooked path straight. We thank you, Lord, that this week we bring about more good news in the name of Jesus, more breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. We bring about joy, we bring about peace in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because you are such a faithful God. We know that this week will be a week of testimony for every member of your church in the name of Jesus. And I also want us to pray about the impending recession that was announced by the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, he did say that uh, this is a kind of recession that we have never faced before. Those are his words. And he did say there will not be a quick bounce back. These are his words. But we're going to pray that the counsel and the word of God supersede any words of man. That what he has said may be facts 
but God's word supersede. So we're going to pray that in the name of Jesus, the nation will bounce back as soon as possible in the name of Jesus. And also we're going to pray that this recession will not be severe in the name of Jesus. There's nothing God cannot do. The Bible says the silver belongs to him and the gold belongs to him. We as children of faith, because we walk by faith, not by sight, we believe the word of God to pursue the word of man. So let us cancel all the words that we have heard being said. These are facts. We're not being ignorant, but we know that God's words will never return back to him void. And so let us cancel those words in the name of Jesus. And I also want us to pray for ourselves that we be like that children of Israel, that when we were in the land of Goshen, we did not lack anything. Though there was a severe famine in the land of Egypt, but because God has directed the children of Israel to the land of Goshen, he provided all that they needed. The Bible recorded that they increased the more in possession and that they were multiplied greatly. And let us believe so, that in the name of Jesus, as the children of the Most High God, we will thrive in this recession in the name of Jesus. And none of us will lose our livelihood in Jesus' name. That our career will not be impacted negatively and that our, um, our jobs will not be impacted in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. We trust in you. We believe in you. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen. Amen.